Hello everyone, I'm Rod Wortham and welcome to this episode of Race Face Driver Updates here on Racing America. This week we had 14 drivers seeing action competing in everything from NASCAR Xfinity to quarter midgets and a few of the drivers pulling double duty, so let's get right to the results. Three of our race face drivers were in competition at Dover Motor Speedway's Monster Mile. So the question is, who can survive Miles the Monster? We start with Jesse Love, who ran the Arkham Menard Series East General Tire 150 with Venturini Motorsports on Friday in his new Yahoo-sponsored number 20 Toyota Camry. Jesse qualified fourth, ran in the top two for the entire race, leading some laps, and brought home a second place finish. We caught up with Jesse right after the race. What's up everyone? We're at Dover. The reason I'm not smiling is because we run second. So, um, had a really good shot at the win. I think we led a good portion of the race. We took the lead on one of the restarts. And I was able to get a good jump and, and obviously take the lead and lead for a good bit. But uh, just came up a little bit short at the end. Uh, I don't think I did the best job at kind of keeping up when the track took rubber. Um, but you know, I feel like I'm my own hardest critic. So uh, we'll come back to the next race, I think Iowa, and, uh, and give them heck there and hopefully win the race. Up next for Jesse, Super Late Models with Wimmer Motorsports at Greenville Pickens Speedway on May 21st. Anthony Alfredo was also at Dover Motor Speedway for the NASCAR Xfinity Series A Game 200. He had a great start to his weekend, qualifying his number 23 Hour Motorsports Chevy Camaro in 10th and was able to bring home a top 15 place finish. Let's get a post-race recap from the driver. Top 15 finish here at Dover. Uh, not exactly what we wanted, but a solid day, clean race car, that's important for us to continue to improve and uh, a decent points day at least. I think we kind of maintain where we are at, but it's the first race this year. We didn't finish better than we started, so I'm bummed about that, but we did have our best qualifying effort of the year, so I'm proud of that. Uh, guys have been working hard on our Civetta Chevrolet Camaro. We'll uh, keep fluffing and buffing and getting ready for Darlington next week. Up next for Anthony is NASCAR's throwback weekend at Darlington Raceway on Saturday, May 7th. This is one of my favorite races of the year. Sheldon Creed completes the trio racing at the Monster Mile in Dover, Delaware. Sheldon posted the 11th quickest lap in qualifying in his number two RCR Whelan Engineering Chevrolet. Sheldon ran in the top 10 for the entire race, scoring points in both stages and finishing the race in 10th. Up next for Sheldon, Darlington Raceway on Saturday. Interested in winning some free Racing America or Race Face swag? Starting next week, we'll start the Spotters Challenge. It's simple to play and everyone is a winner. Somewhere during the show, you'll see this guy pop up giving you a lap number. Take that lap number and go to spotterlap.com and enter to win. Like I said earlier, everyone's going to win something. Hats, t-shirts, polos, free speed zone rewards memberships, and even discount coupons to Victory Lane Design. So make sure to tune in every Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 9.30 p.m. Pacific Time here on Racing America because you never know when this guy will show up. We're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we're going to check in on Connor Mozak, who was at Sonoma Raceway, Caden Honeycutt and Grant Thompson, who were both pulling double duty at Five Flags Speedway and Mobile International Speedway. So stay right there, and we'll be right back with more Race Face Driver updates here on Racing America. My name is Landon Cox and you're watching Race Faith Drive Updates on Racing America. Welcome back. Connor Mozak was in California for the second consecutive week in a row this weekend at Sonoma Raceway. Connor and Team Scott Legacy Racing qualified the number 28 High Point University Trans Am TA2 Camaro in the third position. 
On Sunday, Connor ran in the top five most of the race and eventually finished in the sixth position in a race that was called early due to a major oil down on the track. Connor gave us a recap right after the race. Just finished up here at Sonoma. Um, I think we had a sixth place finish here. Car wasn't as good as we would have liked um, in the long run. Never really got a caution uh, till late, and then we, we never went back green. So never really got to see what we what we had uh, when everything cooled off. Um, so we really were just trying to hang on there for a caution, and um, we just have to do some work on our low grip track kind of speed and uh, see if we can get better. But our next race is in uh, a month at Lime Rock, and hopefully we can. Uh, you know, have some speed there and, and go get us a pony and finish. Up next for Connor, Arca Menard Series at Kansas Speedway on May 14th. Caden Honeycutt was pulling double duty, first at Five Flags Speedway on Friday night for the Modifieds of Mayhem Tour. Caden qualified as number 21, Sotex Motorsports Mod in fifth, and brought home a second place finish in the feature. On Saturday night, Caden took the number 21 to Mobile International Speedway, where he qualified third and crossed the finish line again in second. We were able to catch up with Caden on Sunday back in his home state of Texas. Hey everybody, it's Caden Honeycutt here. Just got done this weekend uh, racing at Five Flags at Mobile International Speedway. Uh, had a really good race on Friday night at Five Flags. Uh, ended up qualifying fifth. Uh, redrew a five and uh, ended up finishing second on the night. Uh, the top four, man, we all, we went to war for the entire 50 lap race. So it was a good race with Augie, good race with Derek Griffin, and uh, it was a good race with Jeff Letson as well. Uh, we ran some really good cars and I'm really pleased with our second place finish there. Uh, also had some damage that kind of messed up the car, but uh, we went Friday, uh, ran that on Friday night and went Saturday night to Mobile International Speedway, uh, qualified third and uh, ultimately ran second, uh, made a wrong change, and unfortunately bottomed out the car the entire 30 lap feature, but we live and learn. Uh, we'll be back for the next time we go back there and we uh, know where the limits are. Just thank everybody, Sotex Motorsports, Colin Alexander, Alan Alexander, my mom and dad, uh, all my sponsors that helped out this weekend, and uh, we'll be back in the car store at Ace Speedway for 10,000 a win and hopefully uh, to turn our luck around. Up next for Caden, Cars Tour at Ace Speedway on Friday night. Grant Thompson was our second race face driver pulling double duty. And yes, he was also at Five Flags Speedway with Sotex Motorsports where he made his debut in the number 21 Outlaw Late Model. Grant qualified 12th in the group qualifying session and then brought home an 11th place finish. On tonight too at Mobile International Speedway. Now this is Grant's home track where he put up the fourth fastest time in qualifying and then backed that up with a third place finish in the feature race. We were able to catch up with Grant for his take on the weekend. Hey everyone, Grant here. Just got done with our, uh, our big weekend. Friday out at Five Flex Speedway and Saturday night at Mobile International Speedway and the Outlaw Division with Sutex Motorsports. Had a really good car all weekend. We were tight at both racetracks and uh, got that figured out. At Mobile the second night, we struggled with it Friday night at Five Flags, but uh, qualified 12th at Five Flags against a really tough little race cars and uh, fought our way up to 11th and uh, came up 11th there and uh, qualified 4th at Mobile and uh, ended up finishing 3rd. So uh, overall, a really good weekend for me and my Sotex Motorsports crew. I can't thank them guys enough. They worked their butts off all weekend to get the car where it needed to be. Uh, I just can't thank everybody enough. Race Face Brand Development, PFC Brakes, Air Bodies, Kerosene Power Steering, Drift Racing Products. And victory lane design uh, thank thanks to everybody who helps out and uh see you guys at the next one up next for grant back to mobile international speedway for more outlaw late model racing on may 14th we're going to take another short commercial break and when we return we'll catch up with cassidy hines in her super late model in colorado jade avadesian slinging some dirt in california and Brody Moore and Casey Klein in round three of the 5150 Junior Late Model Series, and Casey getting in some pro late model seat time as well, all at Madera Speedway. We'll be right back with more Race Face Driver updates here on Racing America. 
Hi, my name is Joey East, and you're watching Race Face Driver Updates on Racing America. Cassidy Hines was making her first start of the year in her number 3C Super Late Model at Colorado National Speedway. Cassidy qualified fifth and finished ninth in the fast dash. Cassie started on the pole with the invert and finished 11th in the A main. Cassie was able to give us a post-race recap right after the race. What's up guys? I raced my Mountain State Fire Protection Super Late Model at Colorado National Speedway and I'd say we had a pretty good weekend of racing. I qualified fifth and I started on the pole in the main which was pretty great since it's my first race in the super late model and I finished 11th after getting roughed up by some of the drivers um I'd say we had a pretty good weekend of racing I'm really proud of what the team brought to the table and I think next weekend will be even better I can't thank any of my sponsors enough commit to fitness frontier restoration Fort Worth screen printing total health solutions Matco Tools, Friends of Jacqueline Foundation, Race Face Brand Development, and the Cassidy Hines Racing Team for all of their help and the amazing car that they set up. Up next for Cassidy, back in the super late model at Colorado National on May 21st. Jade Abadesian was at California's Delta Speedway's 1 7th mile dirt oval in her non wing micro sprint, where she won her heat race and finished ninth in the A main. Up next for Jade, Power Eye National Midgets in my home state of Illinois. Casey Klein pulled double duty for Nate Clower Motorsports in both the 5150 Junior Late Model and the Pro Late Model. Casey finished third in the Junior Late Model and fourth in the Pro. We caught up with Casey right after the race. Hi, I'm Casey Klein. This weekend I was racing at Madera Speedway in Madera, California. I was running in the pro lates and the junior lates, and I had a struggle in practice in both classes. The car was not very fast, and that carried over into qualifying, and so I had poor qualifying efforts and started towards the back in both classes, but we got the car good for the race. In my junior late model race, I ended up battling my way up to third from seventh, and in the pro late model race, I ended up battling my way up the fourth from 16th, but I'd like to thank all my sponsors, Thamer Farms, Mountain View Polaris, Sporty Steakhouse, Farmer Bean and Seed. I'd like to thank Nate Claire Motorsports for giving me this fast car this weekend, Race Face Advancement, and Friends Jack. Up next for Casey, double duty again at State Line Speedway. First the Pro Light model on May 13th and the Super Light model on May 14th. Brody Moore was also at Madera Speedway for round three of the 5150 Junior Late Model Series, where he entered the night first in championship points. Brody qualified his number 78 Charlie Wilson prepared Chevrolet in fifth and finished in fifth. Here is a post-race recap from Brody. Hey everyone, we just finished round number three of the televised MAV-TV 5150 Junior Late Model Series. We couldn't get our car dialed in how we wanted it this weekend, but we had a good qualifying run which put us P3 for the start of the main event. The car didn't come in quite like it normally does for us, so we fell back to about 6th place, but at the intermission we made some adjustments, but it wasn't enough to get us back up to the front of the field. With some good spotting and some hard racing, we were able to bring home a top 5 finish, but I couldn't have done it without the help of my sponsors, California Apartment Associations, Valley Insurance Plan, ARM Multi-Insurance multi -insurance Services, their premier carrier, Amtrust North America, Friend to Jacqueline, and Race Face Advancement. So a huge thanks to them, and I'll see you guys at the next race. Up next for Brody, Madera Speedway and Round 4 of the Junior Late Model Series on May 21st. We're headed for our last commercial break, and when we come back, we'll check in on race face driver Hudson Bulger and race face next driver Cole Denton, both who were competing at Atlanta Motor Speedway for round six and seven of the INEX Furious Five, and race face next drivers Carter Whalen and Landon Cox, who were at Metro Atlanta QMA. Find out if Cole Denton can keep the podium streak alive when we return with more Race Face Driver updates right here on Racing America. 
Hi, my name is Cassidy Hines, and you're watching Race Face Driver Updates on Racing America. Hudson Bulger was competing in round six and seven of the INX Furious Five at Atlanta Motor Speedway in his number 17 Can-Am Young Lions Legend car. In round six, Hudson finished seventh, and in round seven, he finished ninth. Up next for Hudson, INX Legends cars at Chris Motorsports Park on May 7th. Cole Denton was Atlanta Motor Speedway's for round six and seven in the INX Furious Five Bandolero Series, where he scored two podium finishes of second. Let's get a race recap from the driver. Hey race fans, it's Cole Denton. Today we're at Atlanta Motor Speedway for round six and seven of Furious Five on the quarter mile. The first race today, I qualified second, and on the start, I got inside and maintained second, which brought me home a podium finish. Race two, I started pole due to the invert of two cars, and I got passed after a few laps for first place, and I got very tight off of turn two and spun around. But I was able to work my way all the way from seventh back to second, getting another podium finish, and my number 46 INX Bandolera. I want to thank my mom and dad, Bacon Racing, my grandparents, Race Face Advancement, and the Friends of Jacqueline Foundation. Bye, everyone. Cole sets first in national championship points in the Bandolero division, and up next for Cole, INX Bandoleros at Chris Motorsports Park on May 7th. Carter Whalen was at Metro Atlanta QMA where he had a busy day running in three different classes. Carter finished on the podium with all three cars capped off by winning Heavy 160. We caught up with Carter on Sunday to get an update on the weekend. Hey guys, just got back here to the shop after the pre-region race at MAQMA. In Heavy Honda, we had a pretty fast car, had some opportunities to go, for, to go for the lead, but we ended up finishing a solid second. I just really didn't want to risk the car with this big race coming up. Heavy World Formula, again, solid second place. In Heavy 160, the Murder Midget, which is now our 160, got its first win yesterday. So can't say enough about our sponsors. Ultimate QM, Mark Tugg RV, Conquest Strategic Marketing, Baker Racing Engines, TriStar Racewear, and of course, Landon Cox Racing and the whole Cox family. Up next for Carter, Dixie Shootout at Metro Atlanta QMA. Landon Cox was also at Metro Atlanta QMA competing in three different classes as well. The young seven-year-old Georgia driver finished second in Junior Honda, second in Junior Animal, and parked his Junior 160 in Victory Lane. Up next for Landon, Dixie Shootout at Metro Atlanta QMA on May 14th. Speaking of Carter and Landon, the thing I love about quarter midget racing, it's not always about the competition. It's also about family, making friends, and learning good sportsmanship. Teammates Carter Whalen and Landon Cox always help each other out with getting their cars set up, giving each other advice, and just supporting each other on and off the track. Here's a quick video showing a day at the track with Carter and Landon.
You got to love the two of them. Other race face drivers seeing action this weekend include Jake Bowman, who will be back in his number 25 Rackley War Pro Late Model at Nashville Fairground Speedway on May 7th. Well, that's it for this week's Race Face Driver updates. And remember, if you've missed any of our shows, you can get caught up at raceface.tv on demand. Don't forget to follow us on social media. Make sure to check out Speed Zone Race Store for the latest in apparel. As always, we encourage you to support local racing in your communities. We'll be back next week with more from your favorite race face drivers. So go out there, have a great race week. I'm Rod Wortham, thanks for watching.